Hey guys, so I've been playing Stories 2 since release and I have a ton of fun with the game. I've been experimenting with different builds and monster combinations. And this last one that I've been playing with uh, recently, the last few days, has been extremely fun and extremely powerful. The goal of this build is to use your monster to enable you, the rider, to do as much damage as possible. So in this video I'm gonna show you my monster's build and jeans, my rider's uh, gear and uh, talisman, and I'm gonna show you how I use the monster and the strategy uh, in a fight. Alright, so let's take a look at the monster's jeans first. Let's look at the passive jeans to begin with. The first passive jeans is Inflict Rail Up XL. Fully upgraded, it adds a flat 20% chance to apply any status. So for this build, it is very important to have this gene. The second passive gene we have is called Below Gene and it comes from Seragios. It gives the whole team a 30% boost in damage for 5 turns. So needless to say, it is pretty useful when you try to get as much damage as possible on your rider. Okay, so the third passive genes is Might Excel and it's pretty straightforward. It's just more non-elemental damage on your monster. And the last passive skill is Kinship Cost Down Excel. It reduces all of your monster's um, kinship cost by 20%. And I'm usually not a fan of these kind of skills on monsters, but on this build you will be using uh, monster skills a lot, so it is a necessity. I know some people are going to tell me to use the Soul Kinship Genes, which is a, a gene that buffs your kinship generation, and it's a non-elemental gene, so it would add two more bingos to my monster. However, I tried it out extensively, and I looked at the calculations on, uh, on some data mines websites and it looks like it's very inconsistent in the way it works and testing it in practice, I did not see as much benefit uh, using it as with Kin Cost Down, so I stuck with this one. Oh, and by the way, before you guys tell me, I know if I put this gene on the right, I have one more bingo, but I don't have enough genes to do it. So don't tell me, I know I'm working on it. Okay, so let's look at the active genes now, and you'll see all of them are status attacks. So our first attack is uh, Noxious Poison Gene XL. It's a speed attack, and it comes from Dread Queen Raytheon. And this attack is insane. It does a ton of damage. Uh, he has a base attack of 110, and he has a base application rate of 80%. So if you had the 20% of uh, the Inflict Element Gene, it's a 100% application rate, so if the monster you attack, you're attacking is not immune to poison, it will get poison always. So the second speed attack is the Breaking Gene XL, and it comes up from Bloodbath uh, Diablos. And the reason we're gonna choose this attack is because it's pretty strong, um, but mostly it's because it has a 40% application rate of defense down. Uh, so that's 60% with the uh, ailment gene. And the reason I want another status is because uh, it gives you another option. So if the monster is resistant to one status, you have another one that you can use. Or if you want to stack two status, so when the first one runs out, the second one is still up and you don't have a status downtime on the monster. Okay, so the next attack is a tech gene and it's Thousand Blades. It also comes from Seragios. Thousand Blades is the reason why this build is so strong. First of all, it does a good amount of damage. It applies bleed 100% of the time, so no, uh, no chance of fail failure. That's a third option for status that you can use. But mostly, the reason bleed is so strong is because your next attack on the bleed will deal double damage. So I'll talk about that later, but that's a big part of how you're gonna get big numbers. Uh, and that's the bleed status. And finally, for the last uh, attack, it's gonna be our only power attack. And this one is very flexible. Basically, any power attack that has a reasonable cost in kinship that applies any status uh, will work for this, uh, for this gene. For me, I chose the Breaking Gene M because it's a non-elemental single target uh, power attack that costs not so much and that deals defense down, so uh, I chose this one. So to summarize, we have a Nagaku guy that can inflict status very reliably using Noxious Poison, 
Hellbreaker and um, Thousand Blades. So the monster will always be under status effect. On top of that, Nagakuya can give you Merciless Roar, which, which gives the whole team 30% damage boost for 5 turns, so it buffs your damage. And lastly, it inflicts bleed very often, which doubles the damage on the next attack. Okay, so let's move on to the Hunter's build now. The armor that I choose to use is the Dread Queen armor. It gives you Salt in the Wound extra large and Critical large, which are two very good skills. Salt in the Wound extra large gives you 50 more attack every time you attack a monster that is afflicted with a status ailment. For comparison, Elemental XL uh, gives you 40 more damage. So if you're able to always attack a monster that is under status, you will, do, you will benefit more from this armor than uh, the elemental armor sets. And this armor also has critical large, which adds 13% crit chance. On your talisman, the one skill you really want to be looking for is All Out XL. With this skill, you will be using a bit more kinship with your weapon skills, but it adds a flat 60 damage to every attack you do with a weapon skill. It is the single most beneficial damage skill in the game with the least, uh, least amount of conditions to use it. It is kinda hard to get a good charm in this game, so what you really want to be looking for is all out and the second skill is kind of, you get what you can. For me, I use weakness, weakness points large, which has about 22-23% affinity on weak points, uh, but there are a ton of uh, other good skills. Okay, so let's see how to use this build. Your first priority will be to apply and maintain any status on the monster to proc uh, salt in wound. Your second priority will be to apply and maintain buffs. So either merciless roar from Nagakuga or a whetstone. And finally, apply bleed as much as possible and spam weapon skills from your, from your rider. Let's take a look at the fight so you can see how it looks like. I will be using Grimclaw Tigrex and this is the super lair version so he has very high stats and very high HP. I also don't use an AI so I can show you the build better. So as you can see, I use the first turn to buff myself. Nagakuga is using Merciless Roar and I use a Western. On the second turn, I'm gonna apply a status. So I, I choose to apply the poison status and I do a double attack to preserve some kinship. This is gonna be a long fight, so I decided to do another double attack to build more kinship. Uh, on this turn, I also apply, try to apply the defense down status, but unfortunately, it does not proc. On this turn, Grimclaw always does the rock throw. He's targeting my rider, but I'm full health, so I'm no, I know I'm going to survive. So I decide to refresh my buffs, and I, I ask Nagakuga to apply bleed. So there you go, I survived the rock throw and Tigrex has bleed. I know on the next turn Tigrex is going to get enraged, so I want to build more kinship before it does. I'm going to do a double attack and reproc re the poison uh, status. And as you can see, since Tigrex had bleed, um, it did more than 4000 damage for a double attack. Now that I have plenty of kinship and buffs, I'm going to start applying bleed and, um, and weapon skills. So as you can see, I'm going to start spamming bleed with Nagakuga and I'm gonna have my rider exploit the bleed and just take a look at the damage. Not too bad, right? So I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep applying bleed and I'm gonna keep exploiting the, the damage with my weapon. Okay, so let's see the damage this time. And yeah, it's pretty good, another 4.5k uh, damage. And the rest of the fight is pretty much the same, so I'm gonna speed it up. Basically what you wanna do is always the same. Keep a status on the monster at all time. Try to keep and maintain your buff, either with the Whetstone or the Merciless Roar. And finally, try to apply bleed as much as possible and use weapon skill. And you will see uh, really good damage. 
So that's pretty much it for this build. Keep in mind that the game does a very poor job at giving us data and numbers. So a lot of the skills we don't know exactly how good or how bad they are. We are just starting to get some numbers from data miners. So at points, if I'm a bit vague in the video, uh, forgive me, it's just that most of the time I don't have the, uh, the information. But I hope you like the build. Um, I've had a lot of fun using it. So in the comment sections, if you want to tell me if you liked it and if you're, if you're going to try it out uh, and if you enjoy the game. All right, see you next time.